lot of reasons many people purchase various kinds of cars. Heck, there's a lot of reasons people marry certain kinds of people that some of us are like, why on earth would she get with he and he get with her? All of those things. But what I wanna share with you guys today are my reasons on why I purchased my 2022 WRX in case some of these reasons might align with your guys' thought process as you're out there looking at cars, buying cars. So guys, without further ado, let's jump into it. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. If you guys also wanna give out my detailing channel kind of a look, I have a lot of great videos, a lot of great content. We're getting close to getting monetized on that. So any support you guys show me there, I'd really appreciate it. Let's jump right into it. If you don't subscribe to Gone 60, then F you. So these are in no particular order. Uh, there is a lot of reasons that made me end up getting into my 2022 WRX. But without any order, without any preference, anything like that, the first thing that I wanna jump into and kind of explain is if you guys have been following my channel for some time, you've seen me buy a lot of muscle cars. I've had the Challenger, I've had the Camaro, I've had the Bullet Mustang. I went uh, and got a Supra, I had a 3000 GT, I had a Rotary and a Mazda RX-8. I have had an Acura RSX. Heck, I'm starting to forget all the cars that I've owned. I've owned quite a few. Uh, but if you guys know on the channel, I've typically bought kind of those maybe somewhat hard to reach cars a little bit. Uh, I've, I've flown out to a lot of different places in the country, driven a lot of cars back across the country. And so, you know, kind of getting into a WRX, some of them, some of you might say, well, you've kind of downgraded and that's your guys' opinion. There's a lot of reasons why I do like this car. But the first reason I want to jump into on why I went into this is because it was becoming very hard for me to get the cars that I wanted at the prices that I wanted to get. I was looking at Golf R's and I'll throw some maybe some screenshots up here for you guys if I still hung on to those text messages or emails. But as all of you have experienced, if you've recently even looked at trying to buy a car in the last year or two, dealer shenanigans, dealer markups, crazy prices, low inventory. So Golf R, Type R, um, you know, Golf R, I came close here in Salt Lake. I had one three grand over sticker. I almost, almost broke my own rule of not paying over sticker for a car. And I just didn't like the salesman. They wouldn't let me use my own credit union. There were some other gotchas in there that I just didn't like. Had a Type R in Logan uh, that I think they were like seven grand over MSRP for a Type R is actually pretty low. Uh, GR86, extremely hard to get, extremely hard to find, hard to find a sticker, especially if you want a premium, if you want a manual. Uh, it's really hard to get some of those cars on orders because the allocation lines are super long. Uh, thought about going back to the Dodge route and Dodge is just overpriced their cars. Uh, even if you're paying sticker for them, they're, they're, obviously they can charge that price because people are paying them. Uh, came really close to buying a Bullet Mustang, flew out to Wyoming. The car was not in the condition it was supposed to be in. I started looking at other Bullet Mustangs. I started looking at other regular Mustangs, but I remember the transmission issues I had with the MT-82. So guys, the first point is just accessibility. Uh, Subaru, for whatever reason, cracked the code on being able to pump out a lot of inventory on these cars, make them really easy to get. If I would have waited, I would have even gotten a better deal than the deal that I got. I only got like you know a few hundred dollars under MSRP, but I did get the color. I did get all the options that I wanted on the cars if I were to spec it out myself. So the first reason I, I got into this car is I got tired of playing the game with the dealers. I got tired of be, being on waiting lists. I got tired of, hey, it's only $20,000 over sticker, 25 or 15 or whatever it is. I got tired of playing the game. And also another thing is the interest rates. When you compile that into the markups, just made cars starting to become not really a wise decision. It's never been a financially wise decision, but yeah, it's kind of gotten worse. Another reason is simple. I've always wanted a WRX uh, ever since I was 18, 19. Uh, I remember one of my coworkers had a WRX, had a blow-off valve on it, things sounded amazing. I had no idea what it was doing, but I loved the sound, I wanted one. I've always loved the WRXs. I've always liked kind of more the blob eye, the bug eye um, a little bit, and uh, I've always wanted a WRX. I've came very close before I bought the 3000 GT. I almost bought an 07 World Rally Blue uh, WRX STI, and the deal just didn't happen. Uh, there's some there's some issues with the car, and the reason I've never gone down that rabbit hole, I've come close to purchasing STIs, 
I've negotiated on several, is because of who owned them before. Everybody who gets one of these cars, almost everybody tunes them. And tunes can be okay, but tunes can also be really bad. Uh, and sometimes tunes can be good and the cars just don't take it. Every car reacts differently to certain modifications. But I didn't want to get in a situation after my 3000 GT that I had to replace an EJ motor. I had to do a whole bunch of mechanical things to it. Uh, some Subarus can be very reliable and some can't be. Um, I still someday when financial things work out a little bit differently, want to own an older STI. I just, I love them. Um, I love the massive hood scoops. Uh, I love that they're turbocharged. I love everything about them. And for me, I've always wanted one, but I didn't want to roll the dice. Uh, you know, they discontinued the STI uh, for now. And when they rolled out the, the 2022, the VB chassis WRX, I didn't like the looks of it. Didn't like the plastic cladding. My opinions have changed a lot on that. And so I wanted a Subaru with a warranty. I wanted a WRX with a warranty. Do I plan on tuning and modifying this car? I don't know yet, uh, but right now I'm enjoying the car in its stock form. I have an axle back exhaust on. I did the charcoal aero delete, have a K&N filter, but other than that, the car's stock and uh, I get the pops on my shifts. I get a little bit more kind of noise from the turbo from, from the intake. And so I'm actually just really enjoying the car in its stock form and also enjoy having a warranty. big factor and I know this is going to sound dumb and that's okay it's, it's mine I was actually able to drive the car I was able to do a test drive do you guys remember those test drives unfortunately these dealers have had the upper hand of you're lucky to even just put money down on a car before it even arrives let alone test drive it uh, back in the day you know four or five years ago you used to be able to test drive a car sometimes dealers would let you take it for a day or two you know to see if you liked it to see if you know if you got along with the car if you enjoyed it those days are gone. I think they're coming back now because with the financial, economic downturn, whatever we're in, interest rates, everything else, it's becoming a little bit easier to see more cars on lots than it were previously. But I was able to drive the car and when I drove this car, I had a lot of fun in it. Uh, I was considering a GTI at the time. I came very close to that and I'll share, I'll probably talk through that with you guys on a live video. But after I test drove the car, after all the hate on this car, I was like, I'm wrong. I'm wrong about this car. Sure, it only has a three horsepower increase, but the problem I had with a lot of other Subarus in the past, especially the STIs, is the tuning of them. They, they, they were not linear. They, like you would be in boost, boom, fast, slow, fast, slow. This just has a very nice power from start to finish. Uh, the gearing is, is very short. You come up on red line really quick. Uh, but I just, I didn't like the tuning of those cars and, and the ability to just test drive a car. I've missed that. And when I test drove this and I understood what Subaru is doing with this, which is building a more robust platform to be able to handle stronger modifications because that's what their audience likes to do. I was like, okay, I get it. Uh, if you haven't driven the car, uh, it changes, you know, um, maybe sometimes when you kiss somebody, maybe they become a little bit prettier because you like how they kiss you thought. Uh, but at the end of the day, I like that I was able to test drive it and I fell in love with the shifter, just the mechanical aspects. That's something that Subaru has always done a great job of is just how raw feeling they are, mechanical feeling. And as we move to a digital world, I'm hanging on to the mechanical feeling. Another reason is I wanted a turbocharged car and you go, well, Austin, you had some turbocharged cars. You had a Supra. It was an automatic. And honestly, a dealer offered me two grand more than what I paid for the car and to be able to drive it to film videos on it and to make way with it that car sat on that dealership's lot for months and they got down to the price that I, they gave me to for it so they might have even taken i'm sure they took a loss on the car after letting it set for a while so that really wasn't a decision other than just money i, I love the looks of the supras maybe i went wrong and not getting a manual the automatic and those are pretty impressive uh but for me i wanted a turbocharged car and I wanted to get back into a manual. And some people hate on how the WRX is shift, uh, the shifting feeling from the manual. I actually really like them. I like that 
when you're in first, you shift to second, you kind of have a little reminder, like a click click that it's in place. Uh, some people say they're sloppy. Some people say they're too long. That's everybody's opinions. But for me, I just, I like the nostalgic feeling of just a mechanical car, uh, a car that's not perfect, a car that's not rubbery, a car that's not too precise, a car that's a little bit imperfect. Kind of dig it. I kind of like it. And so I wanted to get back into a manual. And uh, another thing that has kind of prompted my change from some of the cars that I've had is uh, we moved into a new house and we moved into a new house that's a lot more expensive than our previous house and my interest rate's a lot higher, my mortgage payment's a lot higher and while YouTube has continued to do okay for me, uh, it's just not growing at a pace where I really wanted to have that big of a car payment and I also wanted to be able to, when I sold the Supra and others, you know, I still still I'm trying to pay myself back for the losses I took on the 3000 GT. So some of it was a financial reason and it was welcoming to walk into a dealership and especially Mark Miller Subaru here in Utah, can't give them enough kudos, but it was refreshing to walk into a dealership, be treated very kindly, very fairly. I didn't even have to put down a deposit on this car. No BS in terms of sales tactics. Um, I mean, they detailed the car really well, better than a lot of dealerships have in prepping the car. Um, they did just a lot of nice stuff when they sent me a gas card, you know, when they mailed me my plates, they put all the stickers on them. It was just a first class experience for how I was treated, you know, from just giving me loaner cars. Like, I don't know if you guys knew this. I was, I didn't have a car for almost a month and you guys probably didn't notice it because of my videos. I, I stretched them out. So guess what they did as a dealership. They gave me a loaner car for free to drive for a couple weeks until my car got in. No other dealers were doing that. So it was such a welcome reception of all of the crap that I felt like I went through with other dealerships, not super dealerships, but other just dealerships in general on some of those more specialty cars where it's like, ah, get in line, kiss the ring. It was nice to have a dealership just with open arms, just welcome you in and just appreciate your business. And my sales rep, Dave, was phenomenal. Uh, just one of, just gave me updates on every single step of the way. And so many other dealerships, just a crappy experience. You get on a wait list, you have to pay so much money. They don't update you whatsoever. You have to reach out to them. So part of it was just the experience that I was given. And after driving this, I was like, hey, I get it. I get this platform. I dig it. It is underrated. And for me, I'm kind of a big underdog guy. I think this car is an underdog and I think people have misunderstood it. And if you don't like the looks of it, I get it. I can't change you guys to think that it's something looks better. I think uh, there's some other WRXs that I like better looks wise. That's just my personal preference. But uh, guys, this car um, and the experience that I had and uh, how it was tuned, driving it, it was just a great experience for me to say, yes, I like it. And this, this next reason might frustrate some of you. As a content creator, uh, you know, if you look at like your favorite bands out there, people want them just to stick to the old classics, you know, and you'll always see bands venture out into a new album or try a different genre of music because they want to push themselves creatively. You know, for me, as it pertains to YouTube, um, sure, you know, I'd be lying if I said I don't enjoy making the income or kind of growing off of it. And I don't make enough to pay for these cars, but there's some benefits to it. But for me, it's more the artistic process. For me, it's more of my marketing background and what I've done in previous roles at other companies that I enjoy making the videos, I enjoy doing it. As I watch some content creators out there, uh, even though I know they make a lot more money than me, even though they have a lot more subscribers than me, I don't like their videos. And I don't like their videos because you can only talk about a Dodge Charger for a certain amount of time. Like, and I'm talking about some really bigger channels. And how many times do I need to see them tint the tail lights? How many times do I need to see them talk about the same old, same old on a car that hasn't been refreshed, a car that hasn't been updated? And I'm sorry for all of you out there. I love the Charger, also considered those. But for me, it's more, you know, as I look at some of the big YouTubers, they don't work on their cars. You don't ever see them drive their cars. In fact, they'll buy a Mustang, but they're, all their content is Dodge content because their must con Mustang content doesn't do well. Like to me, I want to be true to the process and I want to make videos and I want to push myself in different directions. I want to push myself in making different kinds of content. Um, I haven't seen a lot of YouTubers, you know, um, there's Heavy Metal Rex who's doing a great job on the WRX side. Uh, there's Flatline and a few others uh, that I follow. But when it comes to the VB chassis and the WRX, like, you know, I, I want to, 
I don't know where this journey is going to go. I don't know how many more cars, if I'm going to continue to buy tons of cars. I do have a car on order. I do have a car coming soon. Uh, but I don't know in the future, like, hey, will I keep switching brands? What will that look like? I'm just, I'm just flowing, you know? And that's the best way I can say it. I'm just kind of flowing. Some of you might like the changes of cars that I do. Some of you might not, and that's okay. I totally get both sides of the coin. But for me, artistically, I would rather make less money on YouTube, have less subscribers, and make the content that I want to make, rather than me trying to make the content that I think people want to watch. You know, I could turn this channel into a car news outlet where I stand in my backyard or sit in my office and I just give updates on the industry. And I might weave in some of those videos because I think some of you care to get my opinions on cars out in the industry. Uh, but for me, creatively, I felt this is a platform that needs more light on it, that people don't understand. And, and guys, cars have gotten so expensive to be able to get an all wheel drive car, turbocharged, uh, with a warranty, with better reliability, so I think, um, for under 40 or even under $30,000 if you go with the base model, that's pretty sweet, um, pretty sweet. Now, if you think about getting a, let's, let's look at a base WRX, if you look at that. Right now, you could get a base WRX probably for high 20s if you find the right dealer. Uh, if you look at it and you compare that to, let's say, uh, uh, a Type R or a Golf R, you're gonna be paying well into the 50s for one of those, well into the 50s. So for $20,000 less and maybe 30 to 40 horsepower less, now obviously the Type R's front wheel drive, the Golf R is all wheel drive, for $20,000 less and 40 less horsepower, you're getting a car. Now I can't compare the Golf R to a base WRX because there's a lot more features and amenities in, in the Golf R. But if you look at the Type R, which I love and I'm not bashing on because I want one still, there's no heated seats, there's, there's, it, is just a, it is just a driver's car. Well, the base model is gonna scratch all those itches too. Now, it's not an apples to apples comparison, but when you look at $20,000, uh, it's a pretty interesting thing. So at the end of the day, guys, what matters is I'm happy with the purchase. I am happy with this purchase. Uh, I do think I should have maybe waited a little bit because the 2022s um, were still rolling in at the start of 2023. They didn't have 2023s out and uh, probably could have got a better deal somewhere else, maybe paid shipping and other things, but I can't play that game. If I would have hung on to my condo that I was renting a few about five, six years ago and still hung on to it and sold it last year, we can't play that game, but I'm overall, I'm happy with the purchase and that's what matters. Those are some of the reasons why I purchased the WRX. What are some of the reasons you guys purchased WRX or what are some of the reasons you guys wouldn't purchase WRX? Would love to hear it. Guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, blah, 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 blah. Please like, comment, subscribe. We'll catch you on the next video. Thanks guys.